Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrexit. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, it seems that Boris Johnson has resigned, triggering an immediate by-election, just so he could stick it to Rishi Sunak, because Boris Johnson is a man who has no principles. You know, this committee, apparently this committee was, you know, this well, the findings... Um, he, he's got a copy of the findings, so he knows what's coming, you know, but from what I've heard, there was, there was, there was looking at like a, maybe a 20 day suspension from the Hazard Parliament. So he would have to, um, so in that case, you know, they, there could be a by-election under those rules anyway. But Boris Johnson has accused everybody, right? and I mean everybody, right, it's everybody else's fault because it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt, right? that he was having parties. Do you know, I was thinking about this, Jeff, and I thought to myself, you know, I can remember, well, I can remember because I wasn't really born. <laughs> but from what I know, there was a witch hunt against Ronnie Biggs, right? And then they went and robbed the bank. Sorry, <laughs> they went and robbed the train. And I just have to look at it to myself. I think I, I blame the police, right? <laughs> That's how these guys must look at things. They're, you know, it's like, you know, they must look at the, the, the either the, the, the Cray twins, and the, well, there was a witch hunt against them. People was out to get them. The law was out to get them. Then they went and murdered Jack the Hat McVitie. <laughs> say, say, so the witch hunt, was that, was that what, how Jack the Hat McVitie ended up dead? This is the same thing with, with, with people like Boris Johnson. They seem to think, you know what? I can do all these things, right? I can break laws, I can break rules. And if someone, right, judges me for it, then it's a witch hunt. It's Harriet Harman, or Harriet Harperson, as I like to call her. It's Harriet Harman, you know, it's her fault because she was the, she's the chair of the committee, right? And she has already said things about Boris, that Boris Johnson was guilty. But then I say, well, you know, I said they'd have a real problem there because you know if they find the committee because remember this this this, this committee here was actually dominated by Tories. There's four I'm sure there's four there's seven people on the committee. I think four of them are Tories. It's dominated by Tories anyway. I'm sure you know I don't know how much I can't remember how much is on there, but it's dominated by Tories. Tories have got the main main vote on it. But so and Boris Johnson, you know, in his constituency in in um, Uxbridge and Ryslip, I think right, he has got. Yeah, he's got a majority down there. Not a big majority, right? Because he lost, I think he lost quite a lot because it's a, it, I think Oxbridge is quite, I think it is quite Tory down there. <coughs> I think it is quite Tory down there. And um, you start, so you have to say, well, because Boris Johnson is accusing all these people of, of, of plotting to push him out of Parliament. They say, well, they haven't pushed out of Parliament because you resigned, right? And, fur and, and furthermore, right, what what the privilege because it's called the privilege committee right that's the one that that's one that's just done a report on Boris Johnson, so that report has to go to the House of Commons where the Tories have got a majority. So as I was saying before, right, you know whether or not Harriet Harman right is is uh, biased as Boris Johnson likes to put it, but I mean if you are. If you're a person who's dishonest and then you find that people are biased against you, then it, and it, you say, well, it's, it's, their, it's their fault because they're biased against me. Not, not, that, not that you're the person out there breaking the rules or committing, or committing criminal offences. No, you know, it's their fault because they're biased. Because, you know what, they've said something about you doing that. So, you know, so now, as I said, right, the, the Tory party is, dominates the, the House of Parliament. Boris Johnson's got a majority in um, in Uxbridge, but you know, as I said, it's not you know, it's not a, it's only a little majority, right? But because it's like three thousand, I think it's three thousand something. I think it was bigger than that. But he, you know, he come quite close to losing his seat in the last election. But um, so you have to say, well, hold on a minute. Why are you saying that they've pushed you out when clearly you've pushed yourself out? You said, well, I'm resigning. I don't like it here no more. I'm getting out. Right, because they've pushed me out. No, 
Like you resigned because you knew you was going to lose your damn seat in in Uxbridge. Yeah, that you know that was that was the strongest possibility that he was going to lose that seat in Uxbridge anyway. Right, and that's why he hasn't decided to put it to the people of Uxbridge or even to the House of Commons, where he where, where the Tories have got a majority. Now, now if we was like. You know, I don't know because I don't know how, how much of this polarization of politics yet yeah, we're going to have where, you know, where people are. I mean, you, you know, as as it is in America, where you've only got a couple of um, Republicans who will speak out against Donald Trump. Right. And, you know, they, they know what happens to them if they do. You see what happens to Liz Cheney and to Adam King. Kinsinger, right? Those, both of those two's career was just absolutely ruined for going against Donald Trump, and you know, so with you know, with the with the you know, so our our politics hasn't got to that stage yet, where where Boris Johnson knows that there's a good chance yet that the House of Commons are going to say no, you, no, you're you're suspended for the ten or twenty days, get out, right? You can't behave in the way you behave, right? So. Boris Johnson knows there's a very good chance, you know, that even Tory MPs will say no. No, that's it, right? Whether or not Rishi Sunak will, because this morning, you know, already Rishi Sunak said, you know what, right, Boris Johnson asked me to do something I didn't want to do, right? And I was just like, no, I'm not doing it. Even the last time, right, when Boris Johnson said to Rishi, said to um, Savage Javid, they asked Savage Javid to do something, right? Savage Javid said, no, I'm, uh, and, and furthermore, I'm leaving, <laughs> right? And then um, Rishi Sunak said, I'll do it, straight away. And that's when he became Chancellor. So now Boris Johnson has asked Rishi Sunak if he can knock some of this, some of this, you know, some of the, um, the there's a committee that deals with the um, honours list. Boris Johnson has an honours list. Why Boris Johnson got, well, and actually Liz Truss has got an honours list, so you see, honours list don't mean shit. Right, because these people just put a load of fucking asses into the, you know, into the houses of lords. Give them, you know, these people uh, make them into lawmakers. I mean, I think I believe that Sean Bailey's just got a peerage. Right? All Sean Bailey had to do to get his peerage was to be token. Right, so um, yeah, so you know, so Boris Johnson has asked Rishi Sunak right to go against the um the Lords Committee because they've said well. They've just gone through and they said, well, listen, your dad, no, you can forget that. I don't even know how he got his brother through last time because, you know, even though Joe Johnson, Joe Johnson was a much better politician than Boris Johnson, but, you know, still, you know, brother putting a brother into the House of Lords, come on, man. I mean, that just smacks of, um, let me just think, nepotism. And um, so, so, um, Boris, so Boris Johnson, yeah, you know, just being allowed to put in, to, to put in these people, so the so the the, um, the Lord Committee has said, well, no, right, Nadine Doris, no, and a few more. So obviously, those people have now thrown their, their, their you know they've they've thrown their toys out the pram and and resigned. How Boris Johnson has managed to do this yet yeah, to get like well we know we know about Nadine, but there's another um, Tory politician that has resigned as well. That's two of them that have resigned. And how they? No, I don't listen. You know, the, you know. It it seems like a lot of the world is just seeing now, the Boris Johnson that I've always seen. Especially when it comes into the Tory party, because I've always looked at Boris Johnson and thought, you know, what gets me right? See this country, yeah. This country, right, is run off of the rule of law. Why is it that someone like Boris Johnson, right, can just break and just smash the rules and the laws, right, and, the, and so much people in this country still support this absolute clown? And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. A special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up, so thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can, but I will write all the messages for definite. I really hate speaking about Boris Johnson, right? Because Boris Johnson does not deserve, he does really does not deserve anybody's time. Right? That and that is just the truth. I don't know what it is, right, that these people have ever seen in this man. You know, talk about oh, you know, he's got charisma and a vision. Boris Johnson, you know, this is, so what what they're saying is that a lot of liars have charisma, right? Liars are the people who we should be following. Right? Because Boris Johnson, you know, he, you know, he, he he you know, he is very uplifting. Right, and he'll tell you things, oh yes, we could do this, we could do that, we could do this. But knowing that it's all complete and utter fabrication. But, you know, 
if you put you, if you put someone if you put someone up against him, that someone someone up because remember when he was up against Jeremy Corbyn, I was like, oh well, Jeremy Corbyn, all he does is talk the country down. Talk about food banks, and that's the reality of this country. That that is the reality of this country. We've got more food banks than McDonald's. So, you know, so someone needs, you know, well, the people in this country need to listen to 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 the truth because that is the truth. You know, this country is is taken a massive step backwards, massive step backwards. Four children have survived a plane crash and then 40 days in the jungle. You know, the, the, the plane crash, their mum died three days after, the, after but their mum had said to them, listen, you know what, leave, leave me right here, go and find help for yourself. Go and just leave me right here, go and find help. So that's what, she, that, that's what they've done. But, but, you know, the youngest was like 11 months old. Just imagine that. Right, the young eleven months old, the youngest, right, and these kids have lasted forty days. Right? You know, it's, it's amazing that they haven't been eaten by animals or you know killed by animals and eaten. You know, freeze to death in the night. You know, or you know, the, in the day in the daytime, like burn. You know, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's just, uh, but it's a very good story. You know that. Um, a very very good story that they, that they've been found alive and they were just about to stop searching for these kids as well you know so and i, I hadn't really heard much about that story but it's just absolutely amazing because most of the people that was killed most of the people was killed on the plane but it's just now come out that you know that that the um that the mother of these children died two two i think three days after the plane had crashed you know so it's just unbelievable really Toddlers have been stabbed in France, and I believe it was by a guy who comes from Syria or somewhere like that. Who's been? I think he was. I think he's got his um. He he got his right to stay. I think in one one of the European countries, and um, he ended up in France. And I think he applied for asylum there, and um, he had already applied for asylum in another European country. So obviously, you can't do that. So um, he's just ended up going into like this um into. And these was these was children in prams. This guy was stabbing, but then I think some people I think some people um, tackled him to the ground. Donald Trump has been given seven charges. It looks like over the um, document scandals, where and you know there's so much more evidence that's coming out now. So, you know, just so so much more evidence, and like you know anyone who's have to, uh, you know anyone who who wants to defend Donald Trump. They can go out and defend Donald Trump, but if you look at the evidence, when you look at the evidence and see that, like you know, he, he had people moving boxes here and there, and the amount of the amount of like you know um, documents he had and uh, with nuclear secrets and you know, um, you know, defense and attack strategies and all these type of things, and you know, and he's showing doc, and he's showing like you know, he's showing people um, that have no right to look at these documents. He's showing them to people. You know, they've found documents in shower rooms, in like, you know, in 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 offices, just like strewn in his desk, and you know, just in places where people, where too much people would have access to these documents. And he's like, you know, he's, he's on tape, like boasting about you know documents that he's got that 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 he said, well, I know that I can't um, declassify this document now. And when he's, you know, Donald Trump's worst enemy is Donald Trump himself because. I'll tell you exactly when I knew that Donald Trump was in real trouble. The minute he said, I don't pay much tax because I'm smart. The minute he said that, right, that was it. He finished, he finished himself off, right? Because in America, if they can't get you, they get you on taxes. This man's boasting about it. This man's boasting about not paying taxes. He's boasting about it. And he finds, you know, so so that's why, that's why you see all these people are going after him. Because, you know, once once one criminal investigation starts, and then, you know, th then the fact is, like, these people look and say, well, they can't give, yeah, the black guy <coughs> the glory. Oh, no, it has to be some fucking Jew, right, that's backing the black guy to get at Donald Trump. They say, what? Yeah. That's what they're doing. Not thinking, well, hold on a minute. Alvin Bragg has probably looked at, that, you know, the, the um, Central Park, was it three or four? Whatever it was. So I think it was four. 
the, the, the Central Park guys, well, Donald Trump tried to get the death penalty. And if you think, right, because me, as a black man, if I was in Alvin Bragg's position, that's what would be in the back of my mind. I'm not thinking about the Jewish guy. <laughs> I don't think about the Jewish guy at all. But no, that's what they're like. Oh, it's got to be the Jew behind it. It's, it's, it's the Jew behind it. It's the Jew behind Alvin Bragg. I'm, sur I'm surprised they haven't come up with that for Fanny Willis as well. Or Fanny, whatever they want to call her. Right? But I'm surprised they haven't come up with that as well. Do you know what I mean? So, oh, well, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a, Jew, a Jew plot behind that as well. I say what? Black people can't have our own plots. <laughs> you think that there's black people out there who think, well, you know something? This motherfucker's a real racist. And if I had the chance, I'd jail him. Come on, man. That's how we think as well. <sighs> Nicholas Sturgeon gets arrested. And you know something, right? If this fucking bitch is guilty, right, then I would... You know something? I want her thrown in prison more than I want Donald Trump thrown in prison because people from the left should have fucking principles, right? Simple as that, right? You know, when you're from the left, you do a Leroy Logan. You don't go Ali Desai, Okay? You do Leroy Logan when you're from the left, okay? That's what. That's how you live. You don't do Ali Desai, right? Because you know, you see, when people like when when people from the left behave like that, it just gives the right wing the right to say, "Well, look, they're just like us, so you might as well vote for us because they're just like us. They're just as corrupt as us, but only we do it in nicer suits." So, you know, this is, you know, this is just horrible when you think about it, yeah, when you get to this level, this level. And now, and now these people, right, you know, someone like Nicholas Sturgeon has got me, right, you know, having to come up with some whataboutery, right? Because I said, well, hold on a minute. Hold, wait, 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 wait. What about Michelle Moan? Hmm? 60, you know, this woman, this is a woman who's, who's stolen 30 million pounds from the British taxpayer. 30 million. Right. You know, Nicola Sturgeon, 600 million. Scottish pounds. You know, uh, sorry, 600,000, sorry. Scottish pounds. And, you know, and then you look and think, oh, oh, they've bought a um, camper van. Michelle Moan's on a fucking yacht. <laughs> right, so, you know, this is the thing. You know, and then I look and think, well, Boris Johnson, fifty million pound for the Garden Bridge. No police investigation, wasn't arrested. You know, and that's that's what that's the thing we are. What I don't want to have to do. I don't want to do fucking what about her when I'm talking about Nicola Sturgeon. I want this. I want Nicola Sturgeon jailed if she's guilty. Right? If she's guilty, right, I've had anything to do with that six hundred thousand pound guy going missing. Then this woman should be jailed. That's as simple as it is. Right? And I want her jailed quicker than I would want Donald Trump or Boris Johnson jailed. It's just a fucking liberty. Rishi Sunak has struck a deal with the Americans. Not. Not a trade deal, of course, because you know the Americans don't want. We don't want you know as as much as you know these people have always, has been talking from the beginning. You know, you know Britain have already Britain already trades massively with America as it is, as it is. So I don't I don't understand what kind of um, you know I mean this this deal is going to include um, they they're going to be doing some what is it going to be doing? Oh, this one's for I think it's the you know because Britain wants to be at the forefront of the AI. So, so they're having they're going to have the first um, conference about AI in this country. Why I don't know, but they are. Sadiq Khan. They are going to they're going to try and mess Sadiq Khan up with this because Sadiq Khan has said, "Well, you know something, not in my backyard, NIMBY. Sadiq Khan has said, you know something, yeah? We, he doesn't want these barges moored yeah, in London. After he's been saying all the time, we want the migrants to come here. Migrants should be, should be treated decently. So now they've got to start to maul him with this because they're now they're not themselves, you know, because normally the Tories. But, you know, it's, you know to be honest, it's, it's all of these politicians, you know, they all of them will be like, you know, they want to put, you know, I've even heard about a migrant centre, they're trying to build, uh, you know, uh, just outside where there's a village of like a thousand people or something like that. And then they want to go and put like, um, 
nearly two thousand migrants in a mig you know in a new in a newly built migrant centre that they're going to build around there. I think it's old army barracks or something like that. But you know that's what they're going to you know, and you say well, that place is never going to have the infrastructure. Yeah, to look up, you know, if, if it serves a thousand people, then probably you're probably just going to have probably one village shop or something like that. So it's never going to have, it's never ever right, going to have the capacity to serve like you know all a, a, an influx of migrants like that. They need to go somewhere where it's much, where it's a bit more populated, you know, and they've got more facilities. So you know, so putting them in somewhere, you know, it's just. But anyway, they're, they're going to start having a go at Sidi Khan over there. And let's speak about some Brexit, because a massive, there's been a massive blow to British business as the EU have refused to uh, renegotiate the Brexit deal for years to come, for the next whatever years. The EU's just like, nah, we're not really feeling that because, um, you know, we have 30% um, of your sovereignty and we're going to use it to our advantage. But no, on a serious note, all right, if you're not if you're not in the room negotiating and you know for Britain, Britain's not even outside the room where the negotiation's going on. Right? They're on the other side of the channel. So when so when the EU's just bringing in the EU just said, Well, you know something, yeah, we're not we're not prepared to renegotiate the, the you know, so because if Britain had any clout, well they would negotiate when we want to negotiate. OK, that's how that's that's, you know, because they need to remember that we're British. So they right, will wait until we're ready to negotiate. And then when we're ready to negotiate, we've got. But no, it's not like that at all. The EU is like now. Nah, we've got we've got other things we're dealing with at the moment. So, so you know, go somewhere else. That's how, that's how the EU just deal with us, literally. And then we've got. Brexiters are blasting the EU for changing the, for changing the rules over um, like things like jams, jellies, and marmalades, because they're um, they're saying this is one of the reasons why we left the EU in the first place because of you people, right? You, you know, you want to put rules and regulations over people, and how dare you? But the EU have now said, listen, we're changing the regulations, we're changing the the um, the production of jams, jellies and marmalades. If you don't like it, right, then you can sell your stuff to Australia or to New Zealand, can't you? <laughs> but that that is literally how the EU's death that is literally how the EU's dealing with us now. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, well but but as I said, yeah, if you're not in the room, then you can't change anything. Right? If you're in the room you could object or you could say, no 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 we're not no 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 we'll do and then and then they literally can't do it because we haven't got anyone in the room. So our jam, jelly and um, marmalade suppliers, um, producers, have just got to like, you know, they're, they're in a bit of a jam. My friends, this is by any means necessary. I am the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.